In this video I'll show you how decimal inches and fractional inches relate. It's fairly straightforward but uh, somewhat tricky. Fractional inches are somewhat limited and decimal inches are limitless. Where decimal inches you might come across is with wire gauges like uh, electricians and sheet metal people. Okay. Fractional inches. First, uh, we're going to go con convert uh, one to the other and then back and forth. Let's start with an easy fraction so you can see the mechanics in it and how things work here. How about 1 over 2? That's an easy fraction. Let me just zoom in just a tad. About so. Okay, 1 over 2. How are you going to get a decimal out of this one? It's much the same way as you convert any fraction to a decimal you divide the numerator with the denominator because that little line between the digits 1 and 2 that means division so you go 1 divided by 2 equals that number there's your decimal answer you converted half an inch to 0 0.5 inches and this division will be the same idea if we do it with I don't know an eighth of an inch is you divide the 1 by the 8. Okay? So on the calculator you go 1 divided by 8. Done. There's your number. There's your decimal number. 0 0.125. And this 0 0.125 inch is exactly the same as 1 eighth. 1 eighth is easy to visualize, but that uh, decimal number may not be easy to visualize. Uh, fear not. These both are the same or mean the same. Let's do one more with, uh, how about, uh, I don't know, 3 30 seconds of an inch. What do you do with 3 30 seconds of an inch? It could be any numerator, any denominator really. You do the same thing, 3 divided by 32, done. That decimal number is your answer. 0 0.09375 five there it reads 9375 let me see one hundred thousand nine hundred nine thousand three hundred and seventy five one hundred thousand is the same as three thirty seconds of an inch and uh, okay let's move over to this side and let's convert a decimal back to fraction. So to go from a decimal 0 0.5 to fraction, what do you need to do? Well, 0 0.5 is, you read it as 5 tenth. So you make a fraction out of it, 5 tenth. Because the 5 is in the tenth place, okay? So there's your 5 tenth. And then from uh, middle school, you remember uh, such term as equivalent fractions and lowest terms so if you divide 5 by 5 that's 1 and you divide 10 by 5 that's 2 both the numerator and the denominator divide by 5 so it's just a 1 over 2 because we reduced the numerator by a factor of 5 and we reduced the denominator by another factor of 5 so they're both reduced by the same amount. Same thing works with any other decimals. Let's try a different one. Say on this sheet metal gauge here, I have, I just put that one there that holds the page down. Uh, 16 gauge metal is there. Gauge 16, that's the slot for it. If I flip it around, we have a decimal number there. 0 0.0625 let's work with that one 0 0.0625 let's convert it into a fraction uh, what it is is 625 and what's the place value for the last digits it's on the 10 hundred thousand ten thousandth place so it is 625 over 10,000 now that may not be a number on your tape measure, but we'll keep working equivalent fractions until it looks like something you might recognize or visualize. 625 ends on a 25, so it is divisible by 25. And if I reduce this by a factor of 25, 
I'm gonna get 625 divided by 25. Okay, I get 25. And if I divide the 1000 or reduce the one, 10,000 by a factor of 25, I get 400. And if I further reduce these numbers by another factor of 25 yet again, I'm gonna get 1 16th out of it. Okay, I'll spare you the writing. 0 0.0625 in decimal is the same as 1 16th. So this is 1 16th of an inch in fraction and decimal. And that's how we convert from decimal to fraction. You're gonna have to work with the place value of it. If we go to, uh, some other numbers may not be that easy or that lucky. If we go to something that doesn't convert, how about gauge 17, right next to gauge 16. Gauge 17 has a num nah, let's go to gauge 15. That number, that number is around, is around multiple of 10. There, that's gauge 15, okay. So for gauge 15, we have a number 0 0.07. That is the thickness of metal. And to make a fraction out of it, and this is where I said fractions are limited, we're gonna have, to have some limitations here. So that's seven, and that seven is in the hundredth place value, that's seven over 100. There's your fraction, and unfortunately this cannot be reduced to any lower terms. 700 doesn't reduce because 7 is a prime number. What we can do is try to make an approximate, that means approximately equal to, uh, how about 128th of an inch. What you need to do at this point is multiply the 128 by the 7, and then divide by the 100 to get that numerator there. If you do that, it's 7 times 128 divided by 100 equals 8.9. So if I round, round at 8.9 up to 9, we can say that 7 over 100 is approximately equal to 9, 128. 9, 128 is on your ruler, but is uh, this number, this 9 is rounded up. It's 8 point, it's 8.9, okay? So it should read 8.9 over 128. And the minute we have a number like 8.9 in a numerator, it's not a whole number anymore, it's a decimal in a numerator. Now that's an odd looking fraction. That's why fractions are limited. You can't have a fraction like 8.9 over 128. There's got to be a whole number up here for a normal fraction. So, but that's how decimals of an inch and fractions of an inch relate. You can really easily convert from one format to another. Some of these numbers are printed on the back of your rulers, sometimes, not always in a nice neat order and you can just select the numbers that you need and you can uh, follow the fractions and flow the decimals and you can uh, just uh, read it across the lines and your conversion is done but if you don't have it handy this is how you do it fairly straightforward keep practicing